20 yards in your life. And why not? A battle of two top 10 teams in the Big 12. Ninth ranked TCU and number five Baylor. You take a look at the Big 12 standings. Five or 10 years ago, you might not be talking about Baylor and TCU being the teams that are on top. Normally, it's Texas and Oklahoma. That's how it looks right now. There's a couple of those games still going on. Oklahoma has just defeated Texas, and most of you just watched that one. Welcome to Waco, everybody. Brad Nessler with Todd Blackledge. Sort of a seismic shift in the college football landscape yeah. led you a week ago, and with that, all of a sudden, this is the biggest game not only in Texas, but in the country. Yeah. We well, you know TCU was part of the chaos last week, upsetting Oklahoma, and what we're left with is a huge game with two top 10 teams and the winner of today's game not only stays alive in the Big 12 but also stays very much in the conversation for the college football playoff. I think if people look at this game they talk about Baylor's high powered offense and TCU's always got a great defense. Right. I think it's a little more than that isn't it? Well that's what's known. The part that most people don't know is how complete both of these teams are. When you look at what they're doing on the other side of the ball very complete football teams. TCU playing great offense with Trevon Boykin side so what you have are two teams that are better on both sides of the ball than most people give them credit for and I think because these two teams are so similar the deciding factor today will be who has the most explosive plays runs of 10 yards or more passes of 20 yards or more and turnovers it was a high scoring game a year ago there was a little bit of bad blood when it was over they're set to renew it for the 110th time when we come back in a minute seventh year here in Waco on the other side Gary Patterson 14 years on the job for TCU they had kind of a quirky schedule with two open dates in September so they're off to a 4 0 start right. fifth time in the last seven seasons but they're only one and own conference play now they are coming off an upset of Oklahoma but I don't think either of these teams knows quite what they have yet we're going to find out today it's a tremendous matchup. I mean, really, we talked about the strength on strength. Art Bryles considered one of the real offensive gurus, not just in this part of the country, but nationwide. And Gary Patterson, in his tenure at TCU, has been a great defensive mind. So a real chess match between these two, and it's going to happen in hyper speed because both teams right. play hurry up, up tempo offense. There won't be a lot of time to catch your breath. <laughs> won't be a lot of replays no. either for you. Nope. <laughs> Telestrator will have a a week <laughs> off, I think. Well, we got here on Thursday, and we were in flip-flops. It's dropped 30 degrees since yesterday. 61 degrees right now at game time, and it was about 93 yesterday. So it's perfect football weather in a perfect place. McLean Stadium is gorgeous. If you've never been here and you get a chance, as you saw, you can come by the river or come by land. And this is a fired up team that's number five in the country. And a Horn Frog team that came off an upset of Oklahoma and jumped all the way to number nine. TCU on the toss and deferred. Baylor will get the football first. Jaden Obercrom to kick. Clay Fuller, Lynx Hawthorne are back deep. Big 12, big game underway. 
from the two-yard line. It's Hawthorne. It's going to make it to the 18, and that's about it. Nice coverage by TCU as we take a look at our impact players in this one. Shockland went coming off a great game, 148 yards a week ago. KD Cannon's been there, big guy as a receiver, and has had five touchdown catches already. Paul Dawson, huge game a week ago, including an interception for a touchdown, and Carter on the back end. First team preseason All-American, and he does a little bit of everything. Had a couple of sacks and seven solo tackles in the game a year ago. Here comes Bryce Petty. Well, I think it was very interesting what Holly reported about him needing to relax today and let the game come to him. He also has his full complement of receivers. And he's going to go to the air on the first play and goes to his tight end. Javon Armstead, who's a big target, 6'6", 265. And he's normally used in the running game as a lead blocker. Throw him a little bone early and say, keep blocking the rest of the day, big fella. <laughs> he comes out. The extra wide receiver comes in on second down and four. Jack Linwood flanking Bryce Petty in the gun. And Petty uh, play action, looking to throw. Got away from the rush of Caraway and got a couple of yards. Yep, stepped out a little bit short of the first down marker. Have our first third down situation of the game. Third and short. They run a play about every 20 seconds. And in the first half, it's normally even quicker than that. And quickly, they go to the air on third down and short, and no problem. Levi Norwood. You know, Baylor does this a lot. Third and short, they will throw for it. Now, the blocking up front is a run block, and that really freezes linebackers. They do a lot of their pass game off their run game where the line is blocking run, and the quarterback makes the decision whether to throw. Goodley's in the backfield, and this time it's high and through the hands of Corey Coleman, incomplete. So, Petty's first incompletion brings up second down and 10. And again, set in the shotgun, empty backfield. Petty, plenty of time. He's going to go long and too long. Incomplete. Intended for Cannon. And it'll bring up third down and long. Good coverage down the field. That was a pure drop back pass. Again, you don't see that as much from Baylor as you see the play action. But now third and 10, TCU going to play pass all the way here. Baylor. 49% on the third down conversions, which is third in the conference. Flags fly, and Broxton, I false think, start. with a false start. Offense number 61, five-yard penalty, third down. Randy Crystal, our referee, with the first penalty of the day, and now they got third down in a bunch here, third and 15. Coming into the game, Baylor averaging a lot of penalties, offensive penalties per game. Last year in this game against TCU, they had 15 penalties as a team. They had 10 against Texas for 95 yards last week and still won the game 28 to 7. Empty set again for Petty. Get some pressure and he's going to take off with it. I think he's going to get 15. He got about 13 though. Yeah, but how critical was that five yard penalty? Yeah. Because he picks up the first down easily if it's third and 10. But at third and 15, he's going to come up a little short. But Art Bryles loves to go for it on fourth down. And here they're lined up to go. They're 14 of 17 on the year. And they got another one. Into TCU territory is Corey Coleman. Well, that was really good patience by Coleman, who's not a tailback by trade, but he was patient waiting for that hole to open up. And look at how fast they line up at the 48. Petty wants to go deep again. This time he's got a man out there and broke it up. Nice, nice play. play by Sam Carter, one of our impact players. Got a hand in at the last second. There was actually two guys in coverage. Carter had inside coverage, and he read the ball in the eyes of the receiver and got his hand right up in between to knock the ball away. Both of these offenses will take a large number of shots down the field. That's how they're built. Linwood, they fake it to him. They go down the middle, and it's complete. First down, Jay Lee. 21-yard pickup. Safety got out of position that time. Hackett, number one, was out of position in his help coverage. That left a lot of open room in the middle. And Petty right on the money with it. Tenth play of the drive, the opening possession of the football game. This time they do go to the ground. Shocklin would drop by Paul Dawson. And you see the clock in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And they're not even really hustling on this one, but they're, they're going to get it off somewhere around 15 seconds probably. Right on the money. 
And it's Linwood again. And back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Tevin Lawson, first guy there, along with Marcus Mallett, the linebacker. You know, it's interesting. Gary Patterson hired two new offensive coordinators, and they changed TCU's offense to up-tempo, and I think that's helped him as a defensive coordinator and coach in this league, calling fast-paced defense against these kind of offenses. Plus, you get to see it in practice every day. Petty. And he's in trouble, and down he goes. TCU's first sack of the ball game. And it was a community effort. Lawson was there, so was Dawson. Good coverage down the field. It wasn't a blitz, but Petty had nowhere to go quickly with the ball. And now we have fourth and long. So the law firm of Lawson and Dawson with a sack. Sixteen to go on fourth down. Petty down the middle, incomplete. And it's tipped. Yeah. By Terrell Lathan. And Gary Patterson says, here we go. We're going the other way. They take over on downs. They take over, and they take over in great field position. You know, that's the, the other side of that going for it on fourth down. If you miss, you give the other team good field position. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper championship drive game of the week. TCU and BYU. TCU getting ready to take the field as we take a look at our impact players for the Horn Frogs offensively. Colby Lissabee had a career game a week ago. Five catches for 103 yards. B.J. Catalan's their main man in the backfield. Mo Blackshear had one of those games for a defensive tackle you'd love to have. Four tackles a block field on a fumble recovery last week. And Orion Stewart had two interceptions in the victory over Texas. Here's Trevon Boykin and company for TCU and their first offensive possession. And as Todd said, good field position at the 33-yard line. Boykin fires a slant complete pickup of about nine to Deontay Gray. And you'll see TCU going in a hurry. Yeah. When I put the film on and watched TCU's offense, I was amazed at the quarterback awareness of Trevon Boykin. Last year when these two teams played, he played wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, the development in a short amount of time as a quarterback has been astounding. He's going to loft one long near sideline over the head of everybody intended for Doxon. That's one thing TCU does. If you give them press coverage, they're going to take a lot of shots on those fade routes. And, and if you don't hit them, then there's no reason to get out of press coverage. And it'll be up to Boykin to either get a completion or the receivers to draw a pass interference on a couple of those. First third down of the ball game for the Horn Frogs. Third down and two. Boykin wants to throw for it. And over the head and an incomplete pass, but a flag flies in. Ryan Reed was covering on Lissenby. I think the reason we're going to get a penalty is because the ball was not thrown in the right spot. Because the ball was thrown behind the intended receiver. Oh, defense number nine. It will be a 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. See, this is a corner route, and if the ball is thrown to the outside to listen, B, there's not going to be a penalty. But because it was thrown back inside, there was a grab, and that's an obvious call. Had the hand on the jersey, had the tug, and that's what happens. You take shots downfield. You either have to get completions or you draw the penalties if you're going to do that. Every game this year, they've scored a touchdown on their opening march. It They're in crazy. BYU territory already. Crazy formation <laughs> oh, here. Wow on both offense and defense, which spreads things out and gives it to B.J. Catlin. I've got five on the carry. Two new coordinators for TCU. Doug Meacham, who has a lot of history at Oklahoma State. You see the, the linemen spread out, huge splits, and a nice opening run for Catalan. There's Meacham. Sonny Cumbie, the other co-offensive coordinator, came from Texas Tech. Second and six, here's some option. Boykin's going to keep it. Ooh. He got tagged, but he's going to be close to the first down. Stood up by Terrell Burt in the secondary. See, this is the other dimension that TCU's offense has with Boykin. Not only is he a good runner on a scramble or when things break down, but they run a lot of designed option, especially if you give them the look that they want. And once again, we have a third and short situation for TCU's offense. One of those rare guys that leads his team in passing yardage and rushing. Third down and one here. This time they'll come option to the near side, and they got the first and a bunch more. Inside the 30, B.J. Catalan 
Uh, pick up of 11. They went to two tight ends that time and ran the option, the speed option to the wide side of the field and a good read by Boykin, waiting to the last minute to pitch it and get another conversion. They hadn't really shown that that much until Oklahoma yeah, a week ago. Right. But it is something you have to prepare for, and it takes a lot of defensive preparation time to get ready for during the week. Empty backfield here, Boykin to throw. Going to come again to the near sideline and again over the head of everybody intended for Dotson and Xavier and Howard in coverage. Same play as we saw earlier yeah. in this drive. They will do that a lot. I mean, that they really take a lot of shots against press coverage on the fade routes. Take a look at what this offense has done so far this season, the biggest turnaround in college football. Up 171 yards a game, that's big. And as much as anything, it's been the maturity of Trevon, uh, Trevon Boykin going through spring ball and all fall camp as a quarterback. Baylor coming with a blitz here, and it's going to pay off. Down goes Boykin. Back at the 35-yard line. K.J. Smith was the first guy there, and then Blackshear, one of our impact players, cleaned up. Yeah, they brought more than TCU could block. The first guy unblocked didn't get the tackle, but he forced Boykin up in the pocket, and that's where they finished him off. Bo Blackshear, one of the Waco natives, played at Midway High School here in town. Eighth play of the drive, but now it's third down and 16. Again, they'll bring an extra man. Boykin's going to lay it out long. Two men out there, and he's got him. Touchdown. Colby, listen to me. TCU on the board first. Listen, B has great speed. They have a couple receivers that can really get after it running, running down the field. Listen, B not an overly big guy, but great speed, got separation. And again, press coverage, one on one. They give him shots. They will take their shots and listen, be able to get this one for the touchdown. I know both those guys weren't supposed to be in the same spot, but they'll take it. And for Trevon Boykin, his 11th touchdown pass of the year. Listen, B, one of our impact players, talked about the game he had a week ago. Well, he's off to a great start right now. They're reviewing this play. Well, that's a tough play for Phil Bennett's defense. Third down and long. They got the negative play on second down and third and long. They give up a touchdown pass as they're taking a look at it. Yeah, that's a, ball ever touched that's the clearly ground. a touchdown. Yep. Not many times you're going to have two guys a no. yard apart and have one of them come up with a touchdown well, catch like that. that that's got to be the fault of Deontay Gray. I mean, they got away with it. Listen, he had nowhere to go but run a fade. Deontay Gray was the slot receiver and shouldn't have been that up far outside. After review, the previous play is confirmed. So the touchdown caps a 67-yard drive. Remember, Baylor went on fourth and 16. Todd said good field position. And this is the first time Baylor's trailed all year. Yeah. And again, the, the press coverage and the confidence that Trevon Boykin has in taking shots down the field. And they drew one pass interference penalty on this drive, and they got the touchdown on third and long on the last play. Overcrop in for the point after. 7-0 Horn Frogs. 9.32 remaining in the first quarter. And TCU on the board first, capping a 67-yard drive and eight plays. Colby Listenby in the end zone, 7-zip, TCU. ESPN College Football on ABC, brought to you by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. And Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. ShopChooseNissan.com. Robert Griffin, the third Heisman Trophy winner, really kind of set this program on its ear a little bit in that game against Oklahoma in 2011. The pass heard around the college football world, and since then they just keep getting better. Yeah. I'll tell you the thing that that changed for Baylor more than anything was recruiting. Yeah. You know, their, their recruiting now has taken a huge leap, and then you add on these beautiful facilities, oh. and Baylor's not going anywhere anytime soon. This stadium is awesome. Not to mention our broadcast booth, which we could have a party in with all our friends. Kick 
to Hawthorne about four yards deep and he'll take a knee to bring it out to the 25 as we take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate Mr. Blackledge. Well, on second down Baylor got him with a blitz watch Hager come on third down and I want you to watch B.J. Catalan step over and stone the blitz and allow Boykin to have time to throw this ball down the field. That's how you pick up a blitz if you're a running back. Give your quarterback a little time and on the other end the nice concentration and the good hands by listen B. So here comes Baylor. They stalled on fourth down on their last drive had things going their way until a penalty backed them up and a sack. So they'll start at the 25. First half has been all Baylor this year. They're trailing for the first time and Petty's going deep and got his man. Katie Cannon. No, he dropped it. Flag down though. Corey O'Mealy was back there covering. You're going to see both these quarterbacks take deep shots down the field all day. I mean, that's the way these offenses are built. If you give press coverage. Pass interference, defense. Number two, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You know, yeah. he went to make the contact before the ball got there. Just a split second, yep, just though. A split it was a pretty second. good play, actually. Right there. See, he's he's not playing the ball necessarily. He's playing the receiver. And just a hair too soon, he got that contact. So first down at the 40. Linwood and Armstead both in the backfield. Won the tight end for the blocking of Linwood is going for about a yard. That's it. See, this TCU run defense is giving up an average of two and a half yards per carry. They're very stout inside. Pearson and Hunter, the two defensive tackles, have been playing a lot of ball together. Three-year starters. You got Paul Dawson, senior linebacker, Marcus Mallett, senior linebacker. All four of those guys playing at a high level this year make it very difficult to run the football on them. Six times in the last 14 years, TCU's had the number one defense in the country. That's pretty impressive. Petty off play action. Got a man wide open this time. First down, toss. And that's out to Cannon. Pick up of 11. Holly mentioned that this is the first game that Bryce Petty has felt pain free. Well, this is the first game that they've had their full complement of wide receivers back near 100%. Antoine Goodley had a quad injury, and Corey Coleman been nursing a hamstring, so everybody's out there today for number 14. He calls his own number here. And picks up seven. That was going to be a throw off the fake run. It wasn't open, and Petty just made the decision to run. And credit Katie Cannon for turning into a blocker and getting Petty some extra yards. First down carry, and almost a face mask at the end of that play. Now the ball is out. And TCU says they have it. The officials have not made a determination yet. Now they do. Two and oh, I think guy, the guy that's going to come up with the football. I think Sam Carter's the guy trying to rip it out. Sam Carter and Paul Dawson were combining, and Carter got away with the face mask. And as he was grabbing the face mask, Paul Carter or Dawson was grabbing the football. They got away with the face mask, and they got the football instead. You know, that's the old defensive strategy. If one guy has him held up, the second guy in goes and rips for the football. So our impact players, every one of them has made an impact so far. And the second time now that Baylor gets in TCU territory, first they turn it over on downs. Now they fumble it away. And they come in plus four in the turnover category. So they're on the short end of the scoreboard for the first time. And now they're on the short end of the turnovers as well. Well, they've had two touchdown leads in every game this year. They're looking to do the same right now. Boykin, he's going to take another shot. Going long. Got a man and got him. Listen, B, again. Well, you just can't throw it any better than this. Over the outside shoulder. Let the man run away from the defender. Ryan Reed's not in bad position, but this is a perfectly thrown ball over the outside shoulder, impossible to defend. They haven't set the sticks yet, and the play goes anyway, and it's Boykin 
keeping it himself, heading to the corner inside the five. They never got the markers down to the 15-yard line. I was going to tell you it was first down at the 15. Don't, yeah. Didn't even have time to say that. No, they got to get up-tempo uh, chain guys, too, <laughs> to play here. Jeez. First and goal. They do not mess around. At the three. And this time, the officials are going to hold them up and say, guys, we got to at least set some of these things up over here. They don't need that part now. They just need the first down marker at the three-yard line. Two tight ends set again. The last time they were in this, they ran option with Boykin. This time, he gives it to wow. his tailback, who walks in, untouched, Catalan, touchdown, and it might be 14 to nothing again. Boy, they caught Baylor in a slant to the wide side of the field, and they just slanted themselves right out of the play. Two times now, TCU has capitalized. Once on a failed fourth down conversion, good field position, long pass and a score. After the turnover, long pass, they convert again. They've taken advantage of the mistakes Baylor's made early in this game. After the floods, unsportsmanlike conduct, number nine. The penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. It's on Josh Doxson, the wide receiver. But that'll be after our timeout and the extra point that's upcoming. Nothing like a 40-second drive. Overcrom, extra point, up and good. So Baylor had things going their way, turned it over on down. Second time they got in TCU territory, the ball came out. And the Horn Frogs took over, and it only took them three plays to get this touchdown and a 14 to nothing lead on the road. You want to take a crowd out of the game, try a two touchdown lead halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, I mentioned on this touchdown that Baylor got caught in a stunt. They stunted all their linemen this way, thinking the run would go to the wide side. And TCU ran it back to the weak side, the short side of the field with Catalan, and there was only one guy there. Not enough people there to stop that run. Well-designed play, right call at the right time. BJ's fifth rushing touchdown of the year. And so for the fifth straight game, the Horn Frogs lead 14 to nothing. Not sure they were expecting to be this efficient this early against the number five team in the country. We understand Auburn is trailing 14 to nothing as well, by the way. And that went out of the back of the end zone with 740 to go. Robert Flores got our first studio update. Robert. Hey, Brad, Dr. Pepper conference update for the Big 12. Josh Lambert from 55 yards away as West Virginia beats Texas Tech. They scored 17 unanswered to win, 37-34 in Lubbock. And Brad, by the way, the Dr. Pepper Museum is in Waco, Texas. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> so is the uh, the, the uh, Texas, Texas Rangers. Ranger. Yeah. Great, uh, great Hall museum. Really cool place. Well, the good news for Baylor, being down 14 to nothing is not that big of a deal the way they play offense. Right. And this is a, an offense that can explode at any time. This is going to be only about a two-yard gain for Devin Chafin. I don't think they're going to have a great amount of success early running on TCU. I think they're going to have to throw the football to open up their run, and I think Bryce Petty running it might be the best option for him. This time, play action. The slant's a little bit behind Jay Lee, the intended receiver. And Anthony Tejada was back there in coverage. That time Bryce Petty felt a little heat. Paul Dawson was coming on an inside rush, and he kind of short-armed that throw and wasn't accurate, bringing up third down. Remember, as Holly said, he tried to do too much. He thought last week it only went seven for 22 against Texas, though he did have a couple of touchdown passes. He's off to a four for nine start here today. Third down and seven. Petty steps up in the pocket, flushed to his left, and lobs one incomplete. And Baylor's going to have to punt. When we talked to Bryce Petty yesterday and asked him about this TCU defense, the first thing he said was, they are so sound. 
They're very sound. They don't get out of position. They don't make many mistakes. And then they have athletes on top of that that make plays. And that was what we saw right there on third down. Just sound, fundamental defense, good coverage, good contain on the pass rush, and they forced the punt. Cameron Eccles Looper is back waiting on the kick from Spencer Roth. First punt of the football game. Not a great one, end over end. And it's, I think, going to hit a Baylor player as it goes out of bounds around the 31 yard line. Coming up tonight on ESPN, SEC doubleheader for you at six, seventh rank Crimson Tide of Alabama against Brett Bielema's Arkansas Hogs. Then at nine, Bo Wallace and the Rebels, number three in the country. College Station, they'll take on 14th ranked Texas AM. There's the battle of uh, quarterbacks tonight. Bo Wallace coming off a dream of a lifetime last week. Yeah. Kenny Hill has been as good as anybody in the country. Even though they've lost a game, he's already got 21 touchdown passes. Here's Boykin going deep again. Oh, just off the fingertips of Listen B. It would have been another big game. I don't think we've seen this many quarterbacks go long this yeah. early in a football game in a long time. Well, again, press coverage. It's not necessarily blitz with straight man-to-man -man and no safety help. But one thing Baylor does, they play their safeties close to the line of scrimmage, usually inside of 10 yards. And that invites you to take those deep shots down the field. Phil Bennett's defense for Baylor has been really stingy, but they've already given up two touchdowns here in the first quarter with just under seven minutes remaining. And now they come up with a strange alignment. Now they bring their left tackle back in. Three receivers to Boykin's left, but he's coming back, rolling that way. A lot of pressure, and he's run out of bounds on the far side. K.J. Smith yeah. and Andrew Billings over there chasing him out of bounds. Nice play by K.J. Smith, who's getting the start tonight because they lost Jamal Palmer last week in their win against Texas, or in their win against Texas. One of their starting defensive ends toward ACL, so K.J. Smith in there starting at defensive end. So Baylor would like to come up with a stop here. You saw Phil Bennett. 42 percent of their third down conversions this is a big one third and nine little slip screen to the outside and there's what Baylor was looking for as Desmond White gets planted right about at the line of scrimmage Taylor Young who's also getting the start today a redshirt freshman linebacker from DeSoto Texas in for Avion Edwards who is out with an ankle injury loved hearing Phil Bennett talk about <laughs> Taylor Young to us yesterday and makes a big play right there on third down. Expected big things from a little guy, and he got one there. Ethan Perry to punt. Levi Norwood waits back in the middle of your screen on the other end. Last week, it was the special teams that really turned things around for Baylor in their win over Texas. Nice kick. And great coverage. Nice punt and even better coverage. Yep. Lost about four trying to return it. Let's take a look at the AP top 10 rankings brought to you by Allstate. Of course, they were dismantled a week ago. Florida State still up there at number one. Auburn is trailing by a couple of touchdowns the last we heard. Mississippi State moved all the way to three, along with Ole Miss. Baylor here, number five, trailing by two scores. And you see the other games coming up tonight, including Alabama and Arkansas on ESPN. Arizona's been a surprise. Georgia Tech still undefeated. Not a lot of undefeateds remaining. We got two of them here. So somebody's going to go home with their first loss in Waco. Petty again goes down. Two Oa with a sack the second of the ball game. Well, this is coverage. I mean, he wants to throw this quick. He has nowhere to go with the football. And Bryce Petty's just got to get his clock going a little bit faster because TCU has the ability to close the pocket quickly. So he either has to make a throw or take off running or throw the ball away because second and 10 is better than second and 13. Mike Tua is third sack of the year. Quick pass complete out to Corey Coleman. And Coleman broke a couple of tackles. He's still going to bring up third down, but he got 11 of it back. And again, they line up in a hurry on a third down that they really have to have yep, here. Absolutely. 
Got to get something positive going, and they're not going to get it. Not even close. You see the inside tackles. I mean, they, they are strong football players. McFarland came from the end position. Chucky Hunter in there, number 96 as well. Very difficult guys to run on inside. Watch 96 just hold his ground on the double team and spin back into the tackle. Wow. Heck of a play. Guy that's up for just about every defensive award there is the Outland, the Lombardi, and all the rest. Forces are fourth down at two, and now Roth's got to kick it again. Interesting formation again in the punting. They have the three man shield in front of him, though, and the kick fielded on a fair catch at about the 27 yard line as we check in again with Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Brad, AT&T inside the headset. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Auburn and Mississippi State. Bulldogs are up 21 to nothing. This is how they scored their first touchdown. Deronde Wilson from Dak Prescott. And it is all Mississippi State in Stark Vegas. 21 nothing over Auburn. <laughs> they even got the shoes that say Stark Vegas now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love that. Capitalizing on the name. I guess. TCU up 14 to nothing with a ball back at their own 27 yard line. Again, look at how shallow the safeties are for Baylor. Inside of 10 yards here. That invites those opportunities to throw down the field. Boykin will keep it on the option. Cuts back to the right side. A stiff arm. And then tried to hurdle the last man. He still got about five, though, before Ryan Reed could put him down. Todd mentioned this earlier last year. Boykin actually threw one pass for 21 yards. It was a touchdown, but he was playing wide receiver. Yeah. Couple catches for 14 yards. He's come a long way. Finally, he had spring and summer yep. to be a quarterback full time, and it's paying off. Well, there's been a couple things that have really helped him. I'll talk about it after this play. Option pitch. Boykin got leveled. Catalan has nowhere to hide either. That was good defense. Colin Brents, number 38, was the guy who got to the quarterback first. He forced the pitch, and the pitch was a little bit behind Catalan, which caused the play to slow down. Good quick reaction by Colin Brents. Baylor's sideline trying to fire up their defense on third down and eight. And see, the corners are playing off now. They're not as much into press coverage. Look at the distance they're giving over here because they've been burnt. A couple times already by the fade routes. Especially Listenby, who already has a touchdown catch. Boykin going to go deep, left sideline. Same guy, different result, incomplete. And once again, Colin Brents was the guy who hit the quarterback. Came on an outside rush, unblocked. Got a good hit on Boykin, and that ball sailed out of bounds. Both teams with two straight three and outs. As Perry will kick again, Levi Norwood on the return and back inside his 30. Last week against Texas, it was a blocked field goal return for a touchdown and a fake punt that kind of turned the game. The special teams of Baylor. Nice high spiral. And a fair catch back at the 23 yard line. 48 yard kick, no return. And Monday Night Football returns, though. NFC West showdown for you on Monday. Colin Kaepernick of the 49ers square off against the Rams. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN and watch ESPN. No other night is like Monday nights. Kaepernick, what he's done this year. Austin Davis, of course, has to come in as uh, really the third quarterback for the Rams this year. Six touchdowns, three interceptions. Baylor has to figure out how to get their running game going a little bit. They come into the game averaging 247 yards a game, five yards a carry, and they have not been able to run very much at all. 35 yards so far against TCU. Petty's going to go deep. Man's got a weight on it and couldn't make the catch. Cannon was out there, had a step on Hackett and Kindred. You know what? And Petty didn't get out there far enough. But watch what Kindred does. Instead of running into the receiver on this underthrow, he kind of sidesteps out of the way. That's a ball that should have been caught by Cannon. I think Cannon thought that Kindred was going to run into him. I thought he thought he was going to get the, the pass interference, and he lost concentration on the football. Coleman in the backfield. This is his second carry. And Coleman 
Nice run out for a first down at the 34-yard line. The reason we're seeing Coleman is because Johnny Jefferson, their other back, is in street clothes. So they have to have somebody to sub for Shock Linwood, and now they're using Corey Coleman, a wide receiver, at the running back side. Johnny Jefferson tweaked his hamstring this week. That's why he's not out there. Petty going deep on first down, and he's got it. And it's a touchdown. Antoine Goodley. Sixty-six yards for the touchdown. Well, Bryce Petty found the matchup he wanted. His fastest receiver, Goodley, on a safety, Sam Carter. And this time, the deep throw finds a connection. Chris Callahan in for the point after. And whistle before the kick. Might have been a false start, which will make it a little more difficult for Callahan. False start. Offense number 41. Five yard penalty. Try. Now, Goodley is not your typical looking receiver. He's 5'11, 220 pounds. Very physical, but with great straight ahead speed. Now, he has only played, this is his fourth game this year. He missed a couple games with a hamstring injury. They think he's close to 100%. Look pretty good on that one. Well, Preseason All-American after catching 13 touchdown passes a year ago on 71 catches. And as Todd said, maybe 95% healthy right now. Look pretty healthy on this one. 66-yard strike from Bryce Petty. And the lead is down to a touchdown. Sidelines got something to be excited about as first touchdown of the day for Baylor. Short kick to the 10. Echoes Looper. Nice return out to the 35 yard line. I love 20 second, uh, 27 second scoring drive. Yeah. Right? Well, they had to convert on third down and they got it with the run with Coleman, the wide receiver. An 11 yard run and that set up the deep throw to Goodley. Their running game has had some problems. Nice block at the end by the freshman receiver, Katie Cannon. But that key run on third down for 11 yards kind of set that drive up. Two tight end set again for TCU at the 35-yard line. Play action. Boykin going to throw a screen. Actually, he's going to throw it almost to Baylor. Incomplete. And the defense did a nice job of blowing that one up. Yeah, they did. I think TCU needs to try to get B.J. Catalan going in their run game a little bit, too. You know, you throw every time on first down. If you don't connect, second and ten is difficult against an aggressive defense like Baylor's. Problem is, Todd, he just limped off. Yeah. Aaron Green takes his spot in the TCU backfield. Second down and 10. Here comes a full blitz. Boykin running for his life and throws it out of bounds over the Baylor bench. Taylor Young in pursuit. Second down and 10. A good blitz down. Come after the quarterback. They might come again. Third and 10. Now this is one where I think they might show blitz and drop out, try to fool Boykin with coverage on this third down and 10. They showed it for a second, and as Todd said, back out of it. Boykin fires over the head of his intended receiver, incomplete intended for Deontay Gray. And it's a punting situation. Now the crowd's into yeah, it. And all of a sudden, this Baylor defense, the last three possessions, kind of getting their feet under them. They got shocked the first part of the game with some big plays, some deep throws. And all of a sudden now, they've started to get their feet under them. Ethan Perry to punt. Third straight three and out for the Horn Frogs. And this punt's going to bounce backward before it goes out of bounds. That's going to be a pretty good field position for Baylor. Only a 27-yard punt. 
Let's check in with Holly. Well, it did take Baylor some time to settle down defensively. As you guys mentioned, they're playing without two starters. Jamal Palmer out with that ACL tear. Because they lost him at defensive end, they've actually moved Sean Oakman. Normally, he's on the other side of the defensive end. The coach on Monday said, hey, come in here. Let's see if you can get in a stance and be comfortable coming off the left edge. So that is a surprise that TCU maybe wasn't aware of. I've seen them put a tight end over there at times, and he's been disruptive on that left side. Oakman's got the pink hair for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Wasn't that color a couple of days ago. Petty, deep ball again. And caught by Coleman. That one was underthrown, and Coleman made a play of it. Well, this is just a case where a receiver knows where the ball is, and a defender does not. The defender, Anthony Texada, has no idea where the ball is. Coleman did, and he made a play for it and got the completion. To the 15-yard line. And on the ground, this one of the better runs. Shock Littlewood for five to the 10. This is one of those where you don't even want to go to the refrigerator because you're going to miss something. Minute to go, first quarter. We expected a high-scoring affair. Baylor trying to tie it up. They've got it first and goal. And they're only about four yards away from tying it up. Well, the game last year in Fort Worth was a 41-38 ball game that went back and forth. Baylor built a big lead thanks to some turnovers by TCU. TCU fought back and, and had a chance with 11 seconds to tie it up, but threw another interception. They spotted at the five. To the run game and no gain for Linwood. Dawson and Mallett, the two linebackers, combined on the stop. Now this is where I would look for Goodley, again, because of his strength. He's an outside receiver, but at 220 pounds, if you get him on an inside route, he's got great strength working for the football. He's out to the right side. Petty's going that way. Corner. Too far out in front of KD Cannon. Tried to throw the fade and threw it out of bounds. Sam Carter was covering. And it's third and goal. And this is two down territory for yeah. our Bryles, if you ask me, so we'll, well see. <laughs> when your field goal kicker's one for six and you like to go for fourth downs anyway, yeah. yeah. Empty backfield for Bryce Petty. Wouldn't be surprised if a quarterback draw here either. Petty, a very good runner. Wanted to throw the fade again, asked to scramble. And throws it out of the back of the end zone. Fourth down. Chucky Hunter was given chase on Bryce Petty and got him to the turf after he let go of that pass. We're going to go for a field goal here. You said Chris Callahan's one for six and his longest this year is 23 yards. This one's basically going to yeah. be not much longer than an extra point. It'll be a 22-yard attempt. Well, I think Art Bryles is just realizing we need points here. We, we got something going. We got a chance to get on the scoreboard again. We're right here in the football game at home. Let's try to make this a four-point game. Extra point is up and good. That was a kind of cool angle. I like that camera angle. The kicker likes that, too. He made a field goal. 14-10. You got to love a game where your longest scoring drive is 2 minutes, 28 seconds. The other one's 39 seconds, 27 seconds. The last one was a minute and a half to get a field goal for Baylor to cut the lead to 14-10. Final play of the first quarter about upcoming here. There's a quarterback comparison yeah. so far. Four out of 11, it doesn't, doesn't seem like that would be very good, but he's been efficient enough to throw a long touchdown pass, and Bryce Petty, I think, is just getting warmed up. Well, and I think the way both of these defenses play, it's kind of hard to get great numbers as a quarterback, but you're going to have opportunities for big plays, big chunk plays, and I think both guys have shown that so far in the first half. The coaches told us we'd have that, and they were right. And this will be returned from the goal line. Eccles Looper going all the way across field and shouldn't have dropped inside the 10. By Trevon Blanchard, we got a flag down. So the first quarter might not be over yet. Well, if this is on Baylor, this is a, a real unfortunate penalty because that was a bad decision by TCU on the return. Great coverage. And they may have to do it all over again. Offside. 
number 18 of the kicking team. It'll be a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Re-kick. The Art. quarter will be extended by one play. All right, Bryles right now is going to have a word with Chance Waz, a true freshman who was the guy that was offside. Well, again, Actually, he's having words with the back judge right now before he talks to his players. There's the guilty party. So they'll do it again. And as Todd said, they're going to come out of this better no matter what happens, you would think. They're not going to be at the seven-yard line anyway. Last year in this ball game, again, Baylor had 15 penalties in the ball game. They still won, but 15 penalties for 140 yards. Already a couple here in the in the first quarter today. Three on the special teams already. Yep, five and, total. Yeah. So Spencer Evans to kick. And Eccles Looper, I don't think he'll do what he did on the last one if he gets his hands on it. I think he'll run straight ahead. They flip-flop back there, Eccles Looper and Catalan. <laughs> Baylor, Baylor sideline guys that aren't playing are having a blast. This kick is much shorter, obviously, to the 12-yard line. Eccles Looper. This time he goes up the middle, but a flag down, and it's going to negate a pretty good return that time, I think, because we're going to have an illegal block in the back or a holding call. Illegal block in the back, number four of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. We'll extend one play. We're never going to get this first quarter over. we got one more play to go. Great scene here. As again, they're going to start inside their 10 yard line with one more play. So we've had uh, the first quarter coming to a close for about seven minutes now. Yeah. And TCU was huddling all the way on the other end of the field, anticipating to go out <laughs> on that end. And the referees and Gary Patterson said, no, we got to come back down here, guys. We were anticipating going to commercial, yeah. too, but we're staying here for one more play, barring a penalty on the defense. So they didn't come out of it much better. They're at the nine-yard line after the penalty on the return. Boykin stands at his five-yard line with Kyle Hicks in the backfield with him for the first time. Fly sweep. Thought they were maybe going to throw there Deontay Gray, and he is run out of bounds at the end of the, the first, end quarter. Of the first quarter. Finally, end of one. Fun one, too. TCU on the road, leading 14 to 10. This presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Football Dallas app, available now on your smartphone. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary through 15 minutes. A lot of offense already. No, 224 neither. yards for Baylor in total yardage. Neither team able to run very effectively. A couple key runs at key times. And uh, Bryce Petty talked about wanting to kind of relax and let the game come to him. He's starting to do that. They got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, but here are the last few possessions. They've hit some shots down the field and have got themselves right back in the ball game. He's already got 62 more passing yards than he had all of last week in the win over Texas. So he's off to a great start in the first quarter. And the second quarter set to begin. Brad Nessler, Tom Blackledge, Holly Rowe with you from McLean Stadium in Waco. First two possessions, 133 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and then it's been three and outs since. Let's see if Boykin can get him going again. Hicks with him in the backfield. They'll start at the 10 yard line. Boykin completes. Doxon right at the first down marker. Listen, B is the speed guy on the outside. Dotson is more the Strong route runner, bigger target guy at 6'4", 190. Good decision that time by Boykin getting the first down throw. 
Oxen had a good game against Baylor last year. Five catches, including a touchdown. That one got him just enough for the first down. And Boykin keeps this, and he's run out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Holly's right there. We might as well go to her. Boykin under some pressure that time. There's a change on the offensive line for TCU. The left tackle, Tayo Fabulje, is out. They were getting him an inhaler here on the sideline. He's out for the next few plays. So they've moved right tackle Vitae over to the left tackle. Number 68, Joseph Noteboom, has come in at right tackle. So they're trying to get readjusted on the O-line. And you saw Holly almost made the tackle on that last play on the sideline. Second down, 10. And interesting, Baylor has moved Oakman back over to work on that right side against the new tackle. Boykin straight down the middle, and listen, he didn't quite get his head turned around. I don't know if he could have caught it anyway. Xavier Howard was covering. And it's third and ten. I think Boykin was just a little too early with this throw. He wasn't under duress. He didn't allow Listenby to get separation and get his head around. Otherwise, he might still be running because there was no safety help in the middle of the field. Third time now. TCU's been on a third down and ten or more. A little different set here. Two running backs in there. Hicks and Catalan flanking Boykin on third and ten. Right sideline, good throw, good catch. David Porter, first down. Needed 10 and got 11. Well, take a look at the new right tackle, Joseph Noteboom, working on Oakman now. 68, that's a great job against a good time, big pass rusher. Run him up the field. Oakman there, number one sack artist with five. And he is a huge guy, 6'9", 280 pounds, wearing number two. <laughs> Transferred from Penn State a couple years ago. Hicks got leveled at not quite the line of uh, the uh, first down marker, about a yard shot. Blackshear's a player, man. Bo Blackshear, one of the captains of the defense, in on the stop again, along with Byron Bonds. And it's third and one. They've had long yardage on third down. This is a short one. Will Boykin keep it himself? Nope, he's going to pitch it up, fumble, but a one hopper and a first down. Yeah. You talk about a nice bounce. <laughs> That's, a turf. That's a turf bounce. Maybe <laughs> on a grass field it doesn't bounce up that clean, but on this field turf, it was a good pitch. I think Catalan just didn't concentrate, but fortunate that ball bounced right back up to him. Looked like a point guard instead of a tailback. Under further review. And I think they're trying to determine whether or not this was a lateral or a forward pass. They're looking at it anyway. Oh. Oh, Good could point. be. Yeah, that could be an incomplete pass and bring up fourth down and one. Bill Lamagna is our expert up here, the rules expert, former official. What do you think, Bill? I think we have a forward pass, hit the ground, incomplete. Yep. Oh, wait, don't be your tradition since the 1930s. David Ames, our replay official, and we'll get a better look maybe down the line right here. So instead of a pitch and a run, if indeed it's a forward pass, it's uh, incomplete. See, the quarterback's job is to attack the inside shoulder of that defender to maintain the right pitch relationship with the back. He kind of, Boykin kind of drifted and. That gets askew a skew a little bit when you got somebody yeah. in your chin strap, yeah, too. That's true. So they're taking a long look at this one. Pretty important. Would have been a first down. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a punt. And the point Maybe. being, <laughs> if he catches it, even if it is a forward pass, they still get the conversion on a completed pass. So the they, fact that he dropped the ball. Is, uh, is the problem here for TCU. The other thing they have to do, they've already moved the chains, so if indeed they feel that this is a forward pass, they're going to have to figure out where the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage was, and Randy Crystal's going to tell us right now. After review, the previous play is confirmed. First and ten. Well. It'll be a first down, so they don't have to worry about the chain game. Yeah. Bill, what do you think? You, you thought it was a forward pass, didn't you? Yeah, the first look we had it, and I thought he pitched it forward, but possibly with the angle they had, they determined it went lateral. 
um, and confirm the call on the field. So big play there. Kind of put that one in the in the notepad right now and see if this ends up being a scoring drive. That'll be a heck of a big play. Boykin wide open and caught by Dotson and he almost turned around and got away from Ryan Reed. Well, I like the quarterback pocket awareness of Boykin. You see him working his feet, moving from one progression to the next. He started reading left and worked all the way across the field to find Dotson for that one. TCU first down in BYU territory, uh, Baylor territory, beg your pardon, at the 41. Straight up the gut. Kellum might have gotten three before Bryce Hager dragged him back the other way. Hager coming into the game, the team leader in tackles with 29. Dad was a great player at Texas with the Philadelphia Eagles. And they, Phil Bennett said, we don't take him out of the game unless we absolutely have to. If he needs a break, we'll give him a break. We want him on the field all the time. They only lost two games last year. Two of them were when he was injured. Boykin throws off his back foot, just a desperation heave to get away from the rush that Colin Brents was bringing. And it's third down and long again. Second down has been the blitz down for Baylor. They forced Boykin to throw the ball away a couple times in a row now on second down. They've converted a couple of third downs on this drive already, which is in its 12th play. Third down and eight. They back out of the blitz look. Boykin in trouble, getting away from it momentarily, and he's still on his feet. And throws complete, but it's short of the first down. Emmanuel Porter made the catch. Picked up about four when it looked like he was going to yeah. be sacked for about a 12-yard loss. Well, the fact that he got the completion, though, brings up an interesting situation now for Gary Patterson. I think they'll go for it now. They're out of field goal range, but because they got the short completion, they've got a manageable situation here on fourth down to try to go for it. I'd kick a field goal here. Obercron can do it from that distance, but they're going on fourth and four. Blitz. Boykin. Caught. And still going as Dotson all the way inside the 10-yard line. So I'd throw a slant to Dotson. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd do. <laughs> I knew you were going to get me on that one. 26 yards down to the nine. And going in a hurry. Baylor's trying to change up defensive personnel. I don't know if they ever got who they wanted out there. Catalan's going to be dragged down to the line of scrimmage, though. Nice play. Yeah, real nice play. The safety. Stewart. Ryan Stewart came from his safety position to get a play behind the line of scrimmage. 15th play of the drive. Two tight ends. Option formation. And a walk in again for Catalan. Touchdown, TCU. Well, Nobody a, touched him for the second time. What a great block by Jamel Knapp, the left guard, number 77. Just took his man right up the field. Nice block by the left tackle. And an easy touchdown for Catalan. Overcrom in for the point after. Fabula J was back in that possession. And he is the left tackle, and Jamel Knapp, the left guard, just really opened things up easily for Catalan. Like I said, I'd go for it on fourth down, throw the slant, and then right. give it to this guy. 15 play, 90 yard drive, touchdown, TCU. Twenty one to ten TCU time for our Aflac trivia question of the day TCU has lost 19 of their last 20 road games against top five teams. Who's the only team they beat. We'll give you a little time. Well that was an impressive drive right there boy. TCU converted two third downs and one fourth down and for the game now TCU four of eight on third down Baylor only one of six. So one of the games within the game, TCU has the advantage going. Overcrowd's kick. 
will be returnable from the goal line. Hawthorne. Nice move. Hawthorne to the middle of the field and spins his way out across the 30. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the half. Let's check in the studio with Robert Flores again. All right, Brad, Wells Fargo getting it done, and that's what Marcus Mariota is doing against UCLA. He has thrown for two touchdown passes, run in another one, this one to Thomas Tyner, and it's 21-3, Oregon over UCLA, late first half. Oregon's dropped to 12th after being up there in the top five. Here's Baylor at number five and trailing ninth-ranked TCU on their home field. Petty runs for about a yard. Had to scramble, couldn't find an open receiver. I'll tell you, this coverage has been pretty solid for TCU. They've given up a couple big plays down the field, but they've also forced Bryce Petty to go somewhere else a couple times. Petty running out of time again. Going to loft one on the sideline and throws it out of bounds. So it's third down and eight. Yep, that's two plays in a row where the coverage has forced Bryce Petty wants to scramble and wants to throw it away. They're guarding and covering the short and intermediate routes very well. They've given up some plays on the deeper routes in the ball game. Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator for TCU. Baylor's been unsuccessful the last five third down conversions. Petty, plenty of time now. And throws complete. Should be right on the mark. Yep. They're going to give him the first down. See, that's a veteran receiver, and Goodley, a senior who knew what he needed for the first down and got right to the mark. And again, they quickly go. First down at the 42, play fake, and that throw is just errant that time. Way over the head of Katie Cannon. In this offense, so many times, Bryce Petty has to throw that ball so quickly. And a lot of times I asked him, do you, do you throw many throws where you don't get the laces? He says, yeah, all the time. Yeah. And it's gotten to the point where I'm actually probably more comfortable without the laces. And that's such a change in college football. I mean, nobody ever used to throw the ball without the laces. This time he hands the laces off, and it's only about a yard game for Linwood. Chris Hackett, nice open field tackle. TCU's defense, they're, they're sound fundamentally, and they tackle well in space. They make you earn everything. You just don't see them break down defensively very often. If you make plays, you've got to earn them. Third down and nine. Petty looks to the sideline to Coach Bryles, who's right there in the corner of your screen at about the 38-yard line. Play clock down to five. Just a three-man rush on Petty, and it's going to be the quarterback who's going to try to get it, and he won't get there. Got to midfield, but he's a couple yards shy. Uh, shy. Dawson in on the tackle. This was a called quarterback draw because both the back and the guard, Blake Muir, went ahead to block. That was a called quarterback run. Came up a little short. Fourth down, looks like Art Bryles is in a position to go for it. Just shaded on the TCU side of the 50. They're one for two on their fourth down conversion, so here comes another one. And boy, if TCU gets a stop here, they're going to have great field position. They don't get the stop, though. Yeah. Best run of the day, maybe, by Baylor, and it's Chafin yeah. who picks up eight. And a nice read and cut by Chafin because you can't run inside very easily on TCU. He faked inside and bounced it outside and easily picked it up. Now play action. Petty might want to take a shot here. He's got a wide open guy out in the flat, though, and that's Goodley. About an eight yard gain again. Carter made the hit. So we're down to seven and a half minutes in the half. TCU 21 to 10 lead, but Baylor threatening again here. And another nice run off the left side, but that door closed in a hurry. Chris Hackett's made another couple of nice stops in open space out there on the running backs. But they're getting a little balance back to their offense with the run game. You've, you've got to be two-dimensional against a quality defense like TCU. They've got a little bit of thing going now with their run game. And we had a 15-play drive by TCU. Now 10 plays and a touchdown for Corey Coleman.
29-yard touchdown. See, they run the ball for some success, and that sets up the play action. They get single coverage on the outside against the redshirt freshman corner, and they go after it. But it was set up by their run game. Callahan in for the point after. Not quite sure what the holdup's about. Nice the cutting field. with the second touchdown pass of the ball game so far. Started a little slow. Has done a nice job of allowing this game to unfold and to not get frustrated against TCU's defense because you just got to know they're going to make some plays. They're going to create some negative plays. You just got to hang in there. When you get opportunities down the field, you have to capitalize on them. Extra point is good. 7.07 remaining in the first half. Bryce Petty. 11 touchdown passes on the season now. This is his second of the day to Corey Coleman, and it's 21-17. ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. And Bank of America. A 110th meeting between Baylor and TCU, and it's a dandy. We expected 1,000, maybe 1,200 yards of offense. We're halfway there, Ledge, 500 and something. Both teams showing their big play capabilities. We talked about explosive plays, runs of 10 yards or more, passes of 20 yards or more. Who would have the most by the end of the day? Spencer Evans. With a kickoff. Hicks fields it at the five. And got upended as he got to about the 23-yard line. A little earlier, we asked you today's Aflac trivia question. TCU's lost 19 of the last 20 road games against top five teams. Who was their only win? Number five, Boise State, back in 2011. This is the first time these two teams have played each other in all those years dating back to 1899 where they're both ranked much less both in the top 10 only the second top 10 clash ever for Baylor last time was 1956 when they were playing Texas A&M Todd wasn't even around then. pass complete to Dotson picked up about three little subtle change with Phil Bennett's defense they are starting to give a little bit more cushion to listen be and they're putting more press coverage on the other side against Dotson Dotson more the route runner listen be the guy that runs by you they're changing it up from play to play Oakman out of the defensive lineup right now Brian Nance has taken his spot on the defensive front boy can quick slant too far behind Deontay Gray Boy, when they've got it going, they've got big plays, yeah. touchdowns, and then they've got three three and outs. Another third down here. If he sees press, he might take a shot at listen be over the top. He's hit, and down he goes, and the ball is out. His offensive line covers for him. But it's going to be a punting situation and another three and out. Bryce Hager made the hit on Boykin. Yeah, nice delayed blitz by Hager. He's going to kind of come slow and then at the last minute loop around to the outside where there's nobody to block him and knocks the ball loose of Boykin. TCU very fortunate to get back on that one. Perry's punt short. Bounces and goes backward. About seven yards, and this is going to be great field position right now. 
Baylor, their defense comes up with a play, and now their offense sets yeah. up shop at the 40-yard line. And a perfect spot to go play action deep right away on first down. We'll see if they do it when we come back. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week, where it's 21-17 TCU. Well, Baylor up to 73 yards rushing, and what that does, watch these linemen on the last touchdown, the tight end. They are going to block run, and that really makes it difficult for a defense to play play-action pass. As long as those linemen don't go beyond three yards down the field, they can block a running play, and that makes it very difficult to read whether it's pass or run against this Baylor offense. Remember, after that short punt of 25 yards, Baylor from the 40 might want a shot right here. Down the middle and one-handed. Nope, in and out. Armstead had it, couldn't hold it. That's a hard catch for a six foot six former offensive tackle running full speed down the middle. You got to throw that one up around the four and the one for him. Yeah, he's kind of dangling that arm that he tried to haul it in with as he heads to the sideline. Gus Penning will come in and take his spot at tight end on second down to 10. There's Chafin. He kind of bulldogged his way for about five. Chafin's given him a little spark yeah. running it. Linwood had a huge game last week against Texas. 148 yards on 28 carries. We mentioned Johnny Jefferson out of the ball game. They've had Coleman back there. Now Chafin giving him another guy to go to. Third down and five. Petty had a guy right in his grill and he tried to get the pass out there. And uh, Mallet was the guy applying the pressure. Incompletes fourth and five. Yeah, but that's a throw that, that Bryce Petty's got to make. Two throws on this drive with great field position, both inaccurate, that could have been big-time plays. That would have been an easy conversion on third down. Two out of three today on fourth down. They go again here. Got to get to the 30-yard line for the first down. They're going to try to run for it, and they're not going to get it. Not even close. You know, and a little again, surprised at that one. Well, they tried to fool him with the run, but the bad throw on first down, which would have been a big play, and the misfire on third down, which would have been a conversion, stalled the drive. Second time today that TCU takes over on downs, and they've got it back with 5.09 remaining, and all their timeouts left, and a 21-17 lead. Uh, Direct TV drive to the national championship mobile bus traveling across the country following the biggest stories in college football here in Waco a little bit earlier today. Texas three-step going on. A lot of you watched OU in Texas earlier today, 31-26, the final for the Sooners as they bounce back from their loss last week. Come down 99 miles. We've got Baylor and TCU here, 21-17. 9 o'clock at... ESPN tonight, Ole Miss and Texas A&M. That'll be another dandy. And everybody, of course, wants to get the national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. It's here with us today. In fact, it's already been to the Texas OU game. It's here in the corner of the end zone, and then it's going to A&M a little bit later on. Javon Boykin needs to be very careful with the football right now. This is a critical time for TCU's offense. He's going to run this one all the way. And got a nice block out in front, and he's going to get a first down before Hager can knock him out of bounds. Great call and a great decision because the thing that's hurt TCU in this first half, even though they have the lead, is they've been held without a first down on four of their seven possessions because they haven't been able to run the football. Only 46 yards rushing, first down play in that drive, a designed quarterback run. Good time for that call. He picked up 12 out to the 45. Again, both teams have all their timeouts. Catalan, nice tackle. Boy, that guy's a football yes, player. He is. <laughs> Looked like he was going to get by Hager, and Hager said, uh-uh. Had a little late something happen at the end of the play also. At the end of the play, Deontay Gray was without his helmet. Let's see if it was a personal foul one way or the other. A dead ball play at the end of the play. Personal foul, face mask, number 13. Number 20 does not have to leave the ball game because of the foul. First and 10. Terrell Burt. And Gray is blocking on him and uh, I don't know. He loses his lid, but he doesn't have to come out of the game because it was forced off his head. Yeah, he kind of pushed it off of his head. Burt's the guy that had the game-sealing interception in the end zone that ended last year's game. 
And here it's a first down at the 37 now for Boykin and company. Still plenty of time to work with here late in the second quarter. That was a tough one. He got pressure and he kind of threw that off his back foot and never really got into the throw. I think that was Billings creating the pressure, coming right over the, the front. Billings is a powerful, powerful man in there. 6'2", 300 pounder from here in Waco. Set the Texas State prep record over 2,000 pounds lifting weights. Broke the record of Mark Henry, who was at one time the world's strongest man in the Olympics. And Boykin, another strong run. Boy, this is smart. This is smart by Doug Meacham. Sonny Cumbie, we're having trouble running the football. We've hit some explosive plays, run it. Let's go to some design quarterback runs to see if we can open some things up. And two runs by Boykin on this drive have gained big yardage. Yep. TCU is going to take. I think Baylor had a player. Timeout. Yeah, Baylor had a player down at the on the sideline. Might have been Billings. It was chasing that play. A little slow getting up. He's a Waco native too. Waco High School. 805 pound squat a 500 pound bench press and a 705 pound deadlift when he was a senior in high school Are you kidding me that's just ridiculous that's just insane mentioned mark henry was an olympian he's now a wwe wrestler still one of the strongest guys in the world four minute mark first down at the 23. I don't know how Boykin got away from the first guy. The first guy stayed with it, though. Sean Oakman does make the tackle. Well, Oakman's got to be a frightening sight yeah. when you're a quarterback. He's huge. huge. And he's fast. Great wingspan. <laughs> he's still raw as a football player, still yeah. developing from a skill standpoint, but what an athletic talent. Second down and 10 on the option. Boykin slips and goes down. Might have gotten a yard out of it. Taylor Young there to make sure he didn't go any further. Couple nice plays by the Baylor defense in a row after they gave up some chunk plays. They got down in their own territory and they've tightened things up here, bringing up third down. Bill Bennett, the defensive coordinator, hoping his team can prevent a third down and nine here. Empty backfield. They're going to bring a little pressure off the edge. The throw's incomplete intended for Dotson, and Reed had good coverage. Yeah. It was a good round, a good throw, and a good play by Reed all the way around. That's a win for the Baylor defense. They're going to force a field goal. Obercrum, six out of nine on the year. He's had one blocked. Force a field goal and a lot of time left in the first half for their offense. Zach Allen to hold. It'll be a 39-yard attempt. This one's going to be coming right at you. And right through the middle. Three more for TCU. They stretch the lead back to a touchdown again. Well, a chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup heads to the second race of the contender round now. It's win and move on. 12 Nations battle. Eight will advance. Bank of America 500. Charlotte coming up tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ABC. Hey! We got a NASCAR race going on here in a football yeah. game, 24 to 17. Hey, hey, hey. TCU under Gary Patterson, when they lead at the half, they almost never lose. I don't know if they'll have the lead or not because there's still plenty of time left for Baylor's offense to work and they still have all their timeouts remaining. I think in a perfect world would be 24 to 24 at halftime. Yeah. You and I can go have a hot dog. We'll come back and do this again. That's what TCU and Oklahoma <laughs> were at halftime last week. 24 right. 24. Shorter kick this time to the five to Hawthorne. Only got to about the 22, though. That's where Baylor will start with 239 remaining in the second quarter. Now we talked about explosive plays in this game. Which team would have the most? Runs of 10 or more, passes of 20 or more. TCU, three runs, three passes. Baylor, three runs, four passes. And we also talked about turnovers. Ba Baylor has the one turnover. TCU to this point, zero. So uh, that's why we have such a close ball game. 
Last year, Bryce Petty completed 62% of his passes for 4,200 yards and 32 touchdowns with just three interceptions. Today, not quite as sharp, but he does have two touchdown passes in the first two quarters so far. You just have to take advantage of opportunities. Here comes a shot downfield. Overshot his intended receiver, Katie Kane. See, a defense like TCU, they, they're going to contest everything. They're going to contest every run. They're going to contest every pass. And it's hard to have like a 25 for 30 type night throwing against them. You're going to have 50% type completion rate, but you're going to have opportunities to make some big plays down on the field, down the field because of the way they play and how aggressive they are. Rice is 11 of 25, he's 12 of 26, and complete to Cannon this time, short of the first down, by about a yard. So third down and one, and this is one they could really use right here. Corey Coleman in the backfield again. The quick throw is a first down toss. And just barely, forward progress is going to give it to him by about a yard. Levi Norwood made the catch. The defense was right there, yeah. but he had about a foot across, uh, two feet across the first down marker before he was knocked backward. So they move the sticks to the 33. This is the 50th play in the first half for Baylor. And it's a deep ball by Petty. Got a man and got him on the run. Katie Cannon. We're an extra point away from 24 24. That was a beauty. Yep. And I think Kevin White expected some help from the inside from a safety. He had outside leverage on that route, and there was not help coming in time. And a beautiful throw by Bryce Petty. Again, you have to take advantage of those opportunities. We said maybe to be 24, 24 at halftime. We still got a minute 49 to go, though, and we got a flag down on the extra point. Here's the touchdown again. Now watch the outside position by the corner. He thinks the safety's going to help. The safety's late getting there, and Bryce Petty reads that and lays it out for KD Cannon. A little mix-up with the TCU secondary. You're not going to have great numbers, but you will have opportunities to make big throws down the field. And Bryce Petty, patient, and takes advantage of it. You think you're going to take some long shots? Todd talked about this at the beginning of the game. Those are some long shots. Yeah, you just, you know, you, you have to have a mindset as a quarterback in a game like this and say, you know what, this defense is good. They're going to make some plays, but they're going to give us some chances to make some big ones too. <laughs> 45,140 in here. They haven't led, but now they're tied. And we're jumping around just like Madison, Wisconsin here in Waco, Texas. What a great place. It is. Catalan from the six. BJ's got an opening. Kicker to beat. <laughs> Catalan taking it coast to coast. Touchdown. <laughs> now the Horn Frog fans can jump around. They're back in front. 94 yards for the touchdown. Or just a breakdown in coverage for Baylor because nobody even got a, a, a glove on Catalan. You know, his two touchdown runs, he wasn't touched. Yeah, he wasn't touched on right. that one either. Well, you said it. There's still a minute and 40 whatever left. Maybe we're not done. 
over Crum for the point after. 31-24, TCU. You got the crowd energized. You're right back in the game. You're thinking it's tied, but you don't cover the kick with discipline, and nobody even gets a hand on B.J. Catalan. Some good blocks, but that was easy, just like his two touchdown runs were. Again, the only guy that even got a glove on him was the kicker, and that was all she wrote. 94 yards later, touchdown. Trevon yeah. Boykin's going, go, B.J., go, B.J., go, B.J. <laughs> so if you're Art Bryles, the bad news is you just gave up a kick return. The good news is your offense still has a minute 38 left here in the first half. So who knows? We may not be done yet. B.J.'s dad passed away in the last year. He's got that on his uh, wristband. And I'm sure Dad's looking down going, that a boy. Wow. What a first half. Jeez. I guess. We're going to need extra hot dogs <laughs> for energy for this second half. <laughs> Overcom. This one's deep. And they'll bring it out to the 25. And we've got a chance to check in with Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Brad, North Carolina inching closer to undefeated Notre Dame in South Bend. Marquise Williams to Quinshaw Davis. Brings the heels within two at the half. Meantime, over on ESPN News, LeBron James and the Cavaliers facing the Miami Heat in Rio de Janeiro. LeBron James inside to Anderson Verajao. It's very early in the first quarter. 18-14 Cavs on ESPN News. Sure, LeBron and Chris Bosch aren't having any kind words to each other after the past week. They former teammates not talking now, I guess. Here we go, minute 38. Don't go away. Baylor with all its timeouts. Petty. Gonna go down. Sacked by Paul Dawson. It was a delay rush by Paul Dawson. He didn't come right away, but when he saw the backs block, he came late on the pass rush and was able to get to Petty. Petty wanted to throw that ball early, and it was not open. So a loss of five on the sack, second and 15. Three-man rush, Petty the quick slant, and that one, again, a beautiful open field tackle, and that's Marcus Mallett, the middle linebacker. Boy, Paul Dawson and Marcus Mallett, the two inside linebackers for this defense, have played outstanding, not just today, all season so far. They've really given outstanding leadership. Dawson was a wide receiver in high school and now is an inside linebacker for this TCU defense. Baylor's got all his timeouts remaining, and I don't think they're going to use one unless they get a first down. And they didn't get it there. Is that Goodley running? Yeah, Goodley is the tailback that time. Timeout. TCU. That's their first. It's 30 seconds in length. So timeout taken by TCU. Paul Dawson. Cops are just two. talking about him. 230 pounder out of Dallas. High school wide receiver. Went to junior college. Converted to a linebacker. Very active guy playing at a very high level this year. He's one of our impact players. He's making an impact. Last week he did too. He had 11 tackles and a 41-yard interception return for a touchdown. That made him the Big 12 defensive player of yeah. the week coming into this game. And he looked like a wide receiver on that interception. That was a beautiful play that he made last week. Timed his jump, caught it right at the line of scrimmage, didn't bobble it at all, and ran it into the end zone from 41 yards out. So Baylor forced a punt. Eccles Looper waiting on the kick from Spencer Roth. Nichols Looper might have a shot at this one. Takes it on the fly at the 31. Kept his balance. Still on his feet. Eccles Looper all the way out to the 48-yard line. 49, in fact. 17-yard return. Well, because of that stop and calling timeout, and because of the decent punt return, right now, TCU may be thinking, you know what? Let's be aggressive here. We could take some shots down the field with Boykin, maybe get a chance to get in position for another field goal attempt with a one or two completions. This field position, I think, will make TCU be aggressive here instead of conservative right at the end of the half with 26 seconds left. 
Just outside the 48, first down. Baylor's bringing some pressure. Boykin's going to take a shot just off the fingertips of Lissenby. Colin Brents is a guy that got some pressure, but that was oh so close to being another big play. Yep. Baylor anticipating TCU would be aggressive, brought a blitz, less single coverage, and that was the right decision by Boykin, just a slight overthrow on the ball. Overcrown, we saw him on the sideline, the kicker. They've got to get about to the first down marker to even give him a shot. He's got a career long of 56. Draw play. Straight ahead to the 47. Hager makes the stop on Hicks. And another timeout with 13 seconds remaining. Timeout. TCU. So we're down to 13 seconds. Quick reminder coming up tomorrow night. Resurrection, one of television's most compelling dramas. It's all new. Resurrection tomorrow night, 9, 8 Central on ABC. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ABC ESPN crew, Waco, Texas. We expected a high-scoring affair. We got one. Yeah. Well, with TCU having one timeout left, the whole field is open for them right now on this third down play. So they could look to work the middle of the field. They got to get a conversion, obviously. But the middle of the field is open as well to them right here with that timeout. They'd like to get it down to maybe the 37-yard line, somewhere around there to give Overcrown a shot. Third and six. Boykin deep drop, deep middle, off the fingertips of Slanina. Incomplete. Well, now you do one of two things on fourth down with eight seconds left. You either punt it or you just throw one to the end zone. And it looks like they're going to punt the football away. Yep. So Ethan Perry into kick on fourth down at six. Levi Norwood stands back at his 10 yard line. It's one thing we haven't had so far today is a punt return for a touchdown. Just saying. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! We haven't had a bad snap either. Baylor's got it with a second left. One second left. And it's Sean Oakman. But that one is on the snapper. James Power, the snapper. Not very powerful on that one. Way over the head. No chance for Ethan Perry. And now Bryce Petty has one shot. Boy, they're going to come no, out. You they're going to take it. the three. Yeah, yeah. you got to kick yeah. it here. Although Callahan hasn't been Mr. Dependable from field goal yeah. territory this year so far. This will be a 24-yarder. He made a 22-yarder earlier. Gary Patterson having a talk well, with I, Randy Crystal. I think Gary Patterson is wondering how there's still one second left. He, he's thinking that that clock should have run out as Oakman was trying to corral the football. Maybe in Fort Worth it does. <laughs> Here in Waco, there's one second left. There's a whole lot of left. So, Baylor. A 24-yard field goal away from a three-point gift. I thought the clock was going to run out. I didn't think there would be one second left. Callahan's kick is good. They do get the three-point gift as the half comes to a close. Check in with Holly. Hey, Coach, given the way that their front line is disrupting your offense, what concerns you the most about that? 
we just got to quit making mistakes. I mean, you give a touchdown, you know, on a kickoff return, you fumble the ball early while you're moving it, and they go down and score. So we've kind of fought back, and I'm, I'm really proud of where our team is right now. We're down by four. we got 30 minutes to play. We're at home. Our crowd's into it. We're going to come back and get this thing. It's the first time you've trailed all year. How do you address it with your team right now? Oh, we're good. You know, we're a good football team. We'll be fine. Two good football teams, as a matter of fact. At the half, TCU on the road and with the lead, 31-27. We'll send it to the studio after these messages and a word from our ABC stations.